can move it around. You're going to have to move it to where you want to show. So here, and then you can resize it. So share screen and pick Keynote. This is if you have a Mac and share. When you're in Keynote, you have to click play, rehearse, slideshow, okay? And then when you're in this screen, go back up to new share up here. And when you're in this screen, go back, okay? And then when you're in, click play, rehearse, slideshow, okay? Hey, how's it going? <clears throat> um, oh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Teething problems already. Uh, stop share. Am I on? Can you hear me? Are you muted? There you go. Hi, are you? <laughs> Good, yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, I'm a tea. Thank a glass of water yes. in case I get a frog in my throat. Not really bright and early, but look, <laughs> it's all I've got. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have every light on in the house, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How have you been anyway? How's things? Good, yeah. Flat out this week. This week's just a uh, uh, computer-y, you know, like quotes and... Um, design work and things like that. Yeah. Um, none of the exciting stuff, it's all the groundwork, sort of. I know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, January is kind of funny for us as well. We just tend to, um, just tend to get caught up and do a lot of planning and admin and all that boring shit. <laughs> you know, well, like, I normally do my taxes, um, I'd have to be done by July and then give myself all that time in case I need to save a little bit more if I have to pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but just with lock, the first lockdown, I just switched off. <laughs> just yeah. couldn't deal with imagine. real world imagine. stuff. So I had to do that the first week back was just, all right. Yeah. Get all those receipts out. Just, uh, I know there's some kind of, uh, there's definitely uh, like, when you're starting doing it, it's the worst thing in the world. But when you get it done, the sense of relief is just unbelievable. Do you know? Uh, yeah, I, I hate leaving it to January though. Um, it's horrible. I know, I should really. Like, like, January's a horrible month at the best of times anyway. It's like, what am I doing for admin? What, you know? Um, so yeah, so look, there's there's a good few people that have signed up for this as well. And we, we push it out live on Facebook at the same time too. So we normally kind of get in between and 100 people for it and we record it as well so i should have explained all this to you i think it's <laughs> so we record it. we, they're all recorded as well and they're put up onto the creative mornings kind of database the website for basically anybody to view and come along and watch them and kind of that's the whole kind of glory of it is that it's you know you, you do the talk it's like a video podcast almost but then it's recorded and it's pushed out and we kind of promote it and we kind of, you know, so if anybody gets in touch wanting to do a bit of work with you, I will send them your way. It has happened <laughs> it has in the past. So we'll, uh, we'll do that. If that's all okay with you, of course. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I gathered that. Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And awesome. then in terms then of the, uh, I was trying to like think of a really clever way of like, how do you do like a raffle online? And I was searching and searching and searching. Couldn't find anything for the love of me. So when you're going to talk, I'm just going to write the names down of everybody that's okay. on the talk and pull them out of a box at the end. And uh, and then, yeah, I suppose we'll just, like, whatever way you want to do it, we'll transfer you the money or we'll, or we'll kind of do it through your shop, whatever you want, and then yeah. get the address and then you can post it on or whatever. Is that okay? Yeah, that's probably the handiest. Um, yeah. Around the shop with my husband, Jerry, is sort of a joint venture, so... He's sort of the admin person. He's nice. like, well, well, we're getting to that stage now where hopefully I can switch off. I do all the ordering and the designing. Yeah. Um, 
you know, social media, and then we just have this stuff that comes through. How do you find the social media side of things? Just out of pure curiosity, because I, because I kind of, I'm like, I, I have accounts and stuff, and I would maybe like post things to Instagram, like personally. But see, when it comes to like doing it for work, yeah. I just find it takes forever. All right, yeah. like, that's just kind of like, and it's really kind of like quite taxing. I find. It is. I'm not as savvy as some people. I don't have like posts. I'm quite like, I've done something, bam, it's up, you know, instead of, oh, you know, on Wednesdays after lunchtime is a good time to, you know, like, <laughs> I'm not, I don't think of it like that. It's just like, I yeah. act quite impatient. But I quite like just like, oh, I just drew something. And then maybe yeah. just, <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have put that up because now I want to tweak it and it's not actually quite finished, but I can be impatient. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I tend to just post it on Instagram. Uh, yes. like I'm really bad at like Facebook, and I mean, you've probably seen like I, I only just shared the yes. top of Facebook once, but I, everything goes on Instagram. My Twitter is linked to my Instagram, so yeah. I, like, you know yeah. I don't really use it that much. And Facebook is just um, Facebook a bit more because of the shop. Um, there was a big shop in Ireland. Yeah, page. Right. Christmas that was just pushing, you know, like shop local. Yeah. Your stuff on. Now they've monetized that. They've turned it into a business themselves because they had so like they, like two hundred thousand people. Right. Uh, joining the group and the traffic was massive, and loads of people benefited. Like I, I don't hold that against them at all. But now they're like they're running their shop in Ireland website, and yeah. you can sign up as a uh, as a shop and sell your stuff through them as well as through your own shop. Yeah. Well, that, I did use Facebook a little bit more because of that. And even I'm running a competition on my Instagram, which I've never done before, by the way. Um, you know, again, I'm not that type of like, oh, do this competition, get more likes or whatever. I was just like, um, just give something back, I suppose. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly yeah. it. Yeah. Supporting me before Christmas. And um, there was a little mix up as well with my order that I should have got from the States at the start of January. And... Uh, sorry, the start of December. Right. For Christmas sales. So I missed out massively. So they threw out a couple of extra. I was like, well, well I'll just I'll use you just get them right. Yeah. So is this for the uh, like the wraps? Do you get them made in the States? Is that yeah, it's the only place I did loads of research. Wow. And I had seen them before, artists making them hmm. through like uh, Gar- gallery nucleus is yeah. a, a good gallery, like a good online presence there in the States, and I'd seen artists that I follow. Yeah. So called Alex Gold, I think uh, her name is, and she had done one, and I was like, oh, you know, this is like years ago in the back of my mind, going, I'd love to, I'd love to make one of those. That'd be really, really cool. Yeah. It finally happened this year, and it was really like, I don't know who's going to buy these, and you're trying to find like a proper RRP that kind of covers the fact, like I still haven't got a customs bill. <laughs> I'm just waiting. Yeah. For yeah, 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 totally. I'm completely stunned. So. Anyone they read from them, just like put to one side, just waiting for the business end of it all to catch up. Um, but yeah, they were successful, which is great. So. Class. Whereabouts in the States do you get them made? Uh, I think it's Tennessee. Right. They, kind of, they go through all that quite a journey when I'm tracking them. And they have a few branches, but I think it's Tennessee. It's really like um, American family run business. I mean, they're ma- it's a massive business. They have a few different umbrellas. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I couldn't find it. You know, obviously, it tri- like was looking Ireland, looking UK, looking even Europe. And then, you know, it's kind of like, does it matter where it goes? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, totally. You know, it's a massive machine. So it's not like hand woven, but it is machine woven and it is actually proper. Yeah. That's class. And like, have you had any, you know, kind of hiccups with brexit and all this jazz and like have there been any delay i suppose there wouldn't be with the states like because it's kind of yeah well that order i put uh, i've had an issue with that like i said my order should have come but that was actually them you know covid has affected them and how much yeah. staff they've on and yeah, they have yeah, thanksgiving yeah. as well so the end of november is a hectic time for them because they do like one-offs for people so people like they have another part of the business where it's like here's your family photo on a throw blanket, you know, and they'll yeah. stitch it up for you, like a one-off. Yes, yes totally. So Thanksgiving is really busy for them, so they got backlogged there. And then COVID restrictions. Um, uh, so not so much, like the delay wasn't necessarily a, tran- you know, transport thing. Yeah. It was, 
they got snowed under. Um, but no, I was in the post office, uh, uh, had a few sales in the shop this week. Obviously, it slowed down a little bit because it's January, but I was asked this girl and the girl behind the counter just like, All right, so does this affect me? Gather <laughs> 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 me selling stuff from Northern Ireland to the EU. Uh, outside the EU, you know, you already have your trade agreements. Yes. Yes. So I think from Northern Ireland, it makes no odds sending stuff. Um, I'm not sure about getting stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I, do you know what? I don't think anybody knows. I think the people well, that even put this restriction in place don't even know. And that's just the, the we're just like juggling, you yeah. know. Anyway, yeah. good stuff. Look, I'm going to, I will be back. We'll kick this off in five minutes, say. There's kind of some people coming in. Good morning, everybody that's just joined. Um, just waiting on kind of some people. And I'm going to get all the Facebook Live stuff sorted out. So we'll, we'll come back in five minutes. Hi, do I have to sit here for five minutes? No, you can turn turn your camera off. Just kind of <laughs> play some tunes or whatever and like, yeah, you're okay. You're okay. I will totally do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be back in five. <laughs> okay. Stop doing it. Thank you. 
Good morning, everybody. How are we? Can we all hear and see? And that's very good. Sorry, I've been doing these for a year now, and I still don't know how to use Zoom. I don't know how to use any of them, you know. So it's lovely to see you all. Thank you very much for getting up so early on this dark and stormy morning. Um, so let's kick off. You know, we've kind of we've um. This is the first one. This is the first Creative Mornings 2021. Can you believe it? Um, I said we've been doing this for a year. I'm telling the lie. We've been almost doing it for a year. We started in March last year. Um, and it's hard to believe that we were supposed to be doing these kind of face-to-face -face where we come and network and have coffee and croissants and buns and listen to talks. And uh, we've had to do them all online for obvious reasons. So we're kind of fingers crossed this won't be... Uh, there won't be too many that we have to do online. We can actually kind of do them in face to face. Um, there's quite a lot of new faces here, which is nice to see this morning. Um, so, look, I'm just going to run through uh, some little housekeeping things um, before we hand over to our awesome speaker, Frizz. Who's there? Frizz, give us a wave. Is she drinking her tea? or she is. So, um, just a couple of little housekeeping things. You'll notice if you could all mute your mics um, just so there's no kind of disturbing. Um, I'm also going to do the same thing when I shut up. My five-month-old daughter is downstairs going bickies on her jumperoo. So I'll just kind of uh, to save you the pain of that, which she's been doing from five o'clock this morning. But anyway, that's a different story. Um, at the end, we will be taking questions for Frizz. Um, so if you do have a question, just like let us know in the chat or you can throw your hand up um, and we'll circle back to you if you want to ask a question and you'll also probably have noticed that we're going to give away a print um, done by Frizz at the end and um, I was trying to think of a really kind of like smart way of drawing names on a zoom call and I couldn't think of any so I'm literally going to write their names and put them out of a box while Frizz is talking I'm just going to keep that analog um, in this digital world that we are living in uh, so that's it. Um, like I said, there's a couple of new faces in here today, so I'll kind of start the wee Prezi here, if you don't mind. So let's go here, and we'll do this. And can everybody see that okay? I hope, yes. Oh, um, yeah, very good. So look, like I said, a couple of new faces in here today, and that's absolutely awesome to see you all. Um, really. Uh, so this part is kind of for you guys that have never been to Creative Mornings before. Um, so basically, Creative Mornings is a is a, a monthly meetup for creative industry folk, um, and we are in two hundred and twenty cities across the world in sixty seven different countries. Um, and like I said, the idea is to kind of come and network and meet and be inspired by a by a talk. Um, by a local creative in, in each of those cities. Um, but unfortunately, you can't do that. But, you know, regardless, 27,000 people attend at Creative Mornings every month. Um, there have been nearly 9,000 talks online since we started doing this and, and 10 million views. So, so it's quite a big. Um, so, and our events, you know, always have been and always will be free. 
So please continue to come along because if you keep coming, we'll keep doing them. So you know, it's uh, it's 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 really good, um, and hopefully long may it continue. Um, we have a couple of sponsors um, for whom you know without this wouldn't be possible. Oh, sorry, I'm jumping ahead of myself. This the month this month is or the theme this month. I apologise is promise. Haven't really stuck to the theme this month, Frizz, but that's okay. Um, normally we kind of talk around it, but um, we, we haven't this month. I promise you that you'll all have a great time. There you go. That's the that's the that's the link into the promise this week. Um, so Skillshare is our first sponsor who we have to thank. So for those of you that don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community that helps uh, millions take the next step in their creative journey. Um, and they are our newest global partner. Um, so we're very excited to welcome them along this month. So they've extended this uh, a gift, basically, um, of one month free for any new Skillshare premium account um, for attendees of Creative Mornings around the world, which includes you. So if you want to sign up to Skillshare, if you think it would be a benefit to you, I will send you the link, share the link in the chat, and you can just take it from there. Um, Next up is MailChimp. Uh, thank you, MailChimp. They are Creative Morning's official partner for marketing, and without, I would not be able to send you all the annoying emails that I do. Um, so as our theme partner this month, they've also got some news to share. They have a partner program called MailChimp & Co. It's very easy to join if you're a freelancer or an agency at any level. Um, and they teach you, they can teach you how to level up. So if you use MailChimp for your business or for your clients, or you're going to want to probably check that out. And that's actually, this is actually quite a good one. So take a peek at their blog. Again, I'll put the link in the chat um, and you can sign up for free today. Uh, next up is Basecamp. Basecamp are our global partner for project management. Thank you, Basecamp. Um, and to their new email platform, which is Hey. Basecamp don't have any goodies for us this month. Um, that's okay, because they've given us loads of stuff before. I uh, should also mention the field trips. Um, so, field trips are, are workshops and gatherings hosted by people um, that just attend Creative Mornings um, around the world. You can sign up and participate, or you can sign up and um, kind of host something that you're great at. So, if there's everything from origami to writing the perfect email to how to change a tire to you know yoga. And if there's anything that you are good at and you're starting out on or you kind of want to make a name for yourself or you just want to attend some, go, go by because some of them actually are pretty useful. Um, if you're willing to kind of teach a Zoom room of, of lovely humans, uh, then you can submit your idea and you can probably host your own um, field trip. Creative Mornings will coach you through uh, all the technical setup. And um, so you can focus on kind of sharing your passion and your talents to the global community. Um, so you can go to creativemornings.com forward slash field trips. Again, I'll put it in the chat. There it is down in the bottom corner. Um, and you can see all the events that are up there or you can apply to do your own. Um, going a little bit off paste um, for this next bit before I kind of introduce Frizz and, and, and shut up, uh, you'll be glad to hear. Um, we wanted to do something uh, to kind of give back a little bit. Um, this, this year has been pretty awful and, and, and you know has been kind of hard for a lot of people um, more so than others and, and we kind of we kind of made the decision um, to to you know give back a little bit and, and in particular you know for food banks um, of which there are so many and there are so many people that are going hungry in our own city which is just ridiculous people should never go hungry not in this day and age um, so we've partnered up with um, Fair Share uh, Fair Share are in Northern Ireland are directly responsible for tackling food and poverty in the country, um, and they collect surplus food from industry and restart redistribute it uh, into charities that are providing meals to vulnerable people. You know, including disadvantaged groups and low-income families and senior citizens, people with disabilities, victims of domestic violence, so on and so on, the homeless. Um, the Northern Ireland Warehouse in particular has been operating for about six years now, so they're, so they're not new, but they're, they've had their busiest year and, and they're doing an amazing job of, of kind of just helping people and distributing food to people who can't no longer, who can no longer afford it. Um, 
and and have you know have been unable to feed their families. So, create eighty seven charitable projects located in Belfast and Derry and Ballymena, Armagh, um, uh, with enough food for over half a million meals. I, I was speaking to the guys yesterday at, at Fairshare, and they they said to me that twenty five pound goes towards a hundred meals, which is crazy. We all have that somewhere <laughs> lying around. So we wanted to do something to give back to help them out. So we've started a Just Giving page. We don't have a target. We're not gonna, you know, celebrate it kind of when we reached a goal. We're just gonna keep it open and, and we're just gonna spread the word. And hopefully if anybody has an extra bit of change, um, they can, you know, fling it their way. Uh, because like I say, they do, they do amazing work and, um, and, and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really important. They've also asked me to say that if anybody would like to volunteer, um, the Fair Share provide 54 volunteers with valuable work and experience in training, such as food hygiene, forklift driving, and health and safety. Um, so please, if you do have any spare change lying around, please, please you know, fling it their way and um, it's it's all for a good cause and like i said in this day and age nobody should ever be going hungry and um, especially you know kids and uh and and so they're they're really kind of fighting the fire and and uh, and, and helping squash that so that i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna be quiet now after i introduce frizz um so we are very 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 happy um to have frizz join us um at our humble little monthly get together um, for those I, I am positive that everybody on this call has seen a, a piece of artwork by Frizz at one point in their life and um, whether it's been on a wall or online or an exhibition or whatever it is they, they are they are uh, very easy to spot and, and there's quite a lot of them and you I hope you will agree that she is immensely talented so but for those of you that don't know uh, Frizz is a Northern Ireland based artist uh, who works in both traditional and digital media, and um, currently focus on spray painting. Uh, her work largely evolves around the female form and is a study in identity, who we are, where we come from, and what's our connection with the natural world. She studied classical animation in Dublin and illustration in the Telford College in Edinburgh. Very good. I studied in Edinburgh as well, but not there. Um, and we're absolutely buzzing that she's agreed to join us. Um, again, she's been on my hit list for quite a while and with, with little hesitation agreed to, to speak for us this morning. So um, thank you very much, Frizz. We're, we're delighted to have you along. I'm going to be quiet now because you didn't come here to listen to me. Um, you know, shout sponsors at you and beg you for money. So uh, Frizz, over to you. I'm going to give you uh, the sharing. Uh, that I'm going to give you the sharing. Um, yeah, let me see. Oh, this happened the last time as well. Somebody help me. I mean, if I try to share my screen, will it work? Yeah, I think I have. Uh, yeah, no, it's not enabled. Let me see. Do, 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 do. Right, bear with us, everyone. Talk amongst yourselves there. <laughs> Hi, Hi. Hello, hello, hello. hello. I'm Frizz. Um, I'm also Marion. Uh, a lot of people get a bit hung up on whether to call me Frizz or by my actual name, but myself included. We did have a conversation. Really on the first class, it's like, do you, do you want to be known? <laughs> yeah. or Marion. Uh, either or is fine. Um, Frizz is like a nickname, nice. Right? So um, I respond to both. Um, yeah, we, am I good to share there? Uh, hold on, hold on. We're almost there. Also, not very tech savvy, and I got my husband to Zoom me last night so I could see if I could get my, um, I do not have a PowerPoint. I think I've only ever done it twice ever in my entire life, and there's too much room for me to mess that up. So I have just a folder on my desktop, and I will slideshow through those while I'm talking. Um, and yeah, it's not very savvy, but bear with me. That's all I can do. That's so, okay. <laughs> And also the one thing I found is when I when I full screen, uh, for some reason, you'll disappear while I'm on my full screen. So I'll just be talking away into the ether and uh, yeah, it's a bit weird. It'll be like I'll be sitting here talking to myself. So I'm gonna try and share my screen here. Okay, share. 
and make that small and just open that. And hopefully you can all see that there now. Is that right? Yep, all good. All good. Okay, so uh, as John said, thanks for having me on, by the way. Um, I was actually aware of these. I'm actually living in Bangor now. Um, this was on my radar, but I looked into a property, obviously, when John um, approached me. So I think it's really uh, amazing <laughs> opportunity to like have a cup of tea in the morning um, uh, and talk about creative stuff and, and network and things like that. So uh, yeah, my background is I studied classical animation in Dublin and I love animation and I, have, I still have a passion for it, but I am not an animator. It does not suit my temperament. I have a very short attention span. So I um, found out quite soon after doing my course that I didn't necessarily want to go into that industry. I moved to Edinburgh for a while, worked in a bar and did, I got onto the second year of an illustration course actually because I had already done my animation. And that was good just to kind of get me back into drawing again. Um, and then after that, I moved to Belfast. And that's kind of where this whole, whole story begins, really, is from when I moved to Belfast. I'm just going to really quickly talk through some of the stuff I do, um, which I'm not going to concentrate on too much today. But um, do you like these icons? <laughs> I made these icons in lockdown I was like oh I'm gonna do up my website I haven't done anything with them so this is my first time using them months later so I was like oh, I'm gonna throw them in here um so yeah I, I I'm, I'm an artist I mean a lot of people just consider that I'm a street artist but actually uh I don't, yeah it's kind of a, a boxy term you know so I'm an artist who also paints massive murals on walls as well but uh anything creative I like to write as well as a hobby and I I paint, so whether that's like, this one's pretty old now, but I still quite like it, but watercolors. This is the last painting that I actually did. And I don't have a lot of time to do physical paintings. Um, I would have done that one about a year ago. Um, but that's kind of where my style has progressed recently. And I'm hoping to get back into doing more actual canvases this year as well, because potentially I have a bit more time on my hands. Um, also do some digital work. Um, so this is an illustration I did for my husband for his band, Tour Alaska. Um, his name is Jerry Norman. He actually works with me as well. He's part of the business. Um, and this is an image that I created for his album, um, The Guiding Moon. So just to give you an idea of kind of like, uh, I don't just do street art stuff. And um, characters like this are purely just drawn for the absolute joy of drawing a little cheeky hyena. Um, what I use at the moment is Procreate on my iPad uh, with an Apple Pencil. And these are the type of things. So I would have done like uh, prints of these images. And that's the last thing I did digitally there, which is just uh, what I love about digital work is just being able to mess. Um, well, not as much control Z, but you know, you can, or you can have layers and things like that and just go for it. There's no fear because you can't make a mistake, everything's correctable. There's something to be said for working from your, your way through your mistakes as well and fixing things on the go, but I do love experimenting. And, and the things that I do digitally painting um, on Procreate are the stuff that I'm trying to figure out for when I get back onto Canvas now as well. So that's just to show you kind of the latest stuff I'm doing, but yes. Street art. So I moved to Belfast, I actually think it was about 13 years ago now. And um, that summer, I was coming from Edinburgh and we had uh, high enough rent and council tax on top of that, that the tenant had to pay. And I was working in a bar and I was doing like 45 hours or so and I had no money left over at the end of the day. So it was on just over minimum wage. So I moved to Belfast, got a job in an art shop part time. and really figured out that, okay, I can actually just work a 30 hour week or a 25 hour week and have more money at the end of the day than when I lived in Edinburgh. It was just way more affordable. Um, uh, my husband had moved here first, my now husband, um, because of the music scene. And it's really supportive and really vibrant, especially when we moved over at that time. And it was the same with the art scene. I feel like it's really friendly, it's really open and accessible as well, which is great. Um, I should really keep an eye on the time. See, I can't see everyone, so I'm just probably rambling away to myself. 
Um, so I did the Urban Arts Academy in the waterfront that summer that I moved over. I think it was like 50 pound for a whole week of working with um, Kevlar, who was the local artist that was running it. Um, and there was three guest artists over from England as well, street artists, or graffiti artists. So for 50 pound, you got all your materials. Like at the time it was just, I was like, this is unbelievable. Yes, I'm taking a week off work. Here's my money. And this was one of the first things. Everything was collaborative, obviously, in that it was a workshop with a lot of different people. But these are the, my first two street art pieces that I did. One was a stencil, which I despise cutting stencils, but it was fun to do. I, I like doing it on a small scale and I appreciate it as an art form. I just have no patience, as I said before. And the other piece was um, just some brushwork, which is kind of where I started experimenting on walls. So at this point I wasn't really painting a lot um, and it really kick-started. I'm pretty sure I like painted my first canvas in years directly after doing this course. Um, through that I made connections with Adam Turkington who was the person who ran the Urban Arts Academy and um, Kevlar as well. So they introduced me to, you know, like a few months later they were like, oh we're doing this other thing. Uh, if you'd like to uh, join us on that. Um, so that just kind of started my journey. So this is my little muscle top. Um, first thing I properly painted by myself on a wall and it's with brushes and I'm looking at it going oh my god it's a breeze block wall and I use brushes and it was a nightmare to a certain extent. Um, I wasn't that confident with the spray paint. At this time I don't think I'd even use spray paint so it took me a while to get to the point where I actually spray painted you know didn't use a brush at the end. And that was my first spray painted piece, <laughs> which is quite messy and small. And probably took me four hours and I'm pretty sure that night I woke up with like the claw and I had like um, a cramp in my forearm. I woke up in the middle of the night because I was just going over it and over it and over it. Um, now I could probably do that in like five minutes, which is crazy. So, and this one I did not too long afterwards as well. So just to kind of see the journey. Quite soon after that, I think it was probably about a year after that, I had a bit more practice. This is the piece that I did for the Tags Not Labels exhibition up in the Ulster Museum. So I always think of this as quite a little sort of milestone for me um, because the Ulster Museum is like a real gallery. I mean, I, I'm doing that ironically, but there's something you know, that made you feel a bit more legitimate by you know, being in a gallery space with all these like other amazing artists as well. This is Queen Maeve, by the way, I'm from Sligo. If you can't tell, my Sligo Stein t-shirt that my brother designed. Um, so that was a big sort of, I think it was probably soon after this that I went, I left my part-time job. So at this point I was just working part-time and taking weekends off to go do painting jams or doing jobs here and there until the point that I was kind of like, all right, I was looking for more and more time off to do creative jobs. And I discussed this with my lovely, lovely manager, Gail, and we decided that maybe it was time for me to, to spread my wings and fly. Um, so I think it's nine years now uh, that I've been freelance full time. So obviously I did the sensible thing and saved up a bit of money first because taking the plunge like that is it's a big leap. Um, one thing I love about spray painting and the culture of spray painting and mural work and street art and, and graffiti is this idea of collaboration. So this piece is um, myself and Dan Leo who I have a huge love for. He's a good friend of mine um, and our styles actually at that time kind of worked almost uh, they were quite similar, so it was quite easy for us to collaborate um, together. That piece is still, that's in Belfast and it's still there, looking a little tired now. Um, but yeah, one of my favourite things about like, so I learned to spray paint, like I did that workshop, but actually it's through meeting other people and painting alongside them and then showing you little bits of, oh yeah, have you ever tried this before? And I'm like, okay, so you're just constantly adding to your knowledge, adding to your arsenal. Um, Another piece here with Jess Tobin, novice. Uh, it's, it's just something, and this with my mentee, Amy, who I did a mentee program, mentorship program through Arts for All in Belfast, and that was really great. 
So it's just, uh, it lends itself really nicely to that. Um, this first big wall I did by myself. And I actually remember getting roller skates like about a week before and I haven't used them since because I was like, if I break my leg and I have to do this job and climb up uh, a scaffolding, that's not gonna happen. So this is Ryan's Bar in Belfast. And it was my first time doing a really, really big wall by myself. Um, a lot of my pieces have female characters and animals, usually carnivores actually, just like that idea that um, someone, there's more than what lurk, you know, more lurking beneath than what you see maybe on the surface with a lot of people. Uh, so that's a theme in a lot of my work basically. And I love my little chubby wolf. This is another piece that was done. I'm gonna kind of go into sort of pieces I've done over the last couple of years. This is CS Rose Square in Belfast, in East Belfast. And it was um, a uh, Narnia themed wall. Um, one of my favorite pieces that's still going as well, it's still up there, this is in Belfast. Um, I was really hung over the morning that I painted this wall. And I'd already done another big wall and this is for Hit the North. And the idea I had for the wall, there was two things stopped me from doing it. I didn't have a ladder tall enough to go above the height that I reached in this. And the shape of the wall and the vents that were on the wall uh, obviously created a problem. I wasn't, I didn't know that they were there. So I actually just stood there, stood back, looked at it and just worked with the wall. And this is what came up. But actually, I think it's just a really good example of working. You know, like it's nice to get a blank, nicely plastered, nicely rendered, lovely coat of paint on a wall and have good access to it. But like sometimes you get really good work when you're just like pushed into a corner and you just have to work here. So that one worked out really well, actually, I think. Um, again, one of my favorite walls from last year is this is for Hit the North as well. Um, it's called Tiger Tiger. Same thing, I, I use this split screen sort of effect a lot in my work. And again, it's just that idea that, um, you know, someone might be quite meek and mild, but they can be, have quite a fierce heart and, and be very strong, even though they might not appear that way outwardly. And not everything lasts. So this is the wall a few years later. Um, I'm not sure if it's still standing or if it's completely demolished yet, but it's sort of the nature of street art. Just wanted to include that. that once you paint something on, on the street, uh, you just have to say bye bye and whatever happens to it, happens to it. Um, you can't be too precious. That's something you learn. It's not something that you, uh, maybe the first time it was a bit, oh, I like that wall, but now it's like, okay, I got my photo. It's gonna last as long as it lasts. Um, again, just using that split screen. These are all for Hit the North. These are all around Belfast, mainly the pieces that I'm showing at the moment. Um, this one was done in Manor Hamilton. This is a commission actually for, for the crowd that built this whole, rebuilt this whole area up. Um, I just wanted to kind of show scale as well. I've got a big one, little Tuppy Robbie. This piece is from Waterford Walls a couple of years ago. One of the things that I like to do if I'm painting in a place I've not been before or if I, if I have a wall, I like researching the mythology, you know, the stories um, that are connected to the place. So this is the three sisters, the three rivers that run into Waterford, um, the Ban, the Nor and the Soar. Is that right? I knew at the time. <laughs> I think that's right. So it's just that idea of I'll do my research of an area, find stories and see what visuals so I've got the little hamster wheel going as I'm doing my research and something eventually clicks in an image. Of course, you're working with the wall as well. This was a really long wall, so I had to find a way to do something that um, would have worked on it as well. I mean, if it was a tall wall, it would have been a completely different mural at the end of the day. This one's in Downpatrick. Uh, I just love colour and I love uh, if you see some of the earlier pieces I did, the random color palettes are mainly because spray paint is so expensive. So you end up just using whatever you have and not necessarily being able to, you know, like, oh, I'm going to go spend 40 pounds on, you know, this one painting, especially if you're trying to paint a lot. Uh, but there's something about that is quite freeing, you know, so you're doing a green lady or um, a pink uh, panther or jaguar. And I quite like messing with colors and just pushing them a little bit too. 
uh, notable wall from a couple of years ago, which is in Bangor, where I live now. It's my hometown, so it was nice. I just had to stroll down from the house to do this one. This isn't actually my work per se. This is a Jeremy Geddes piece, uh, painting that I've recreated, but it was really, really interesting to dissect his work and the color choices that he had. And he was doing an oil painting and I was trying to translate that into spray. But um, yeah, it was really, really fun wall to do. And actually, Sub Patrol asked me to do another wall down in London the following year for their current album. So that was good. It's nice. I mean, that's the thing when you start now, you do a job for one person and maybe a couple of years later, they'll come back to you. And it just kind of snowballs very organically, or it did for me, you know, I do a job with one crowd and then maybe someone sees that and that they give my details to them and then you know to the point where you can pay rent basically. Um, been really lucky the last few years to travel to some very cool places and create some work. So this is in Cali in Colombia which I got to go to a couple of years ago um, and create a piece for their festival on the theme of anti-violence. Um, so this character, again, did my research for when I was going to the area. It's Bachue, who is their sort of uh, the mother goddess of that sort of region, that I, the goddess that all life sprang from. Um, of two symbols there, the arrow that she's snapping in her fist and the heart shape as well, which I've done just with a color change. Um, and this one, again, was in 2019 in Ankara in Turkey. And that was a really amazing experience because the whole theme of the festival, this was promoting a, a film festival, an accessible film festival um, in Ankara. Sorry if I'm going on too long. John, just jump in and tell me to hurry up and get through these slides. Um, where yeah, I... Going. Are we good? Yeah, you're sweet. Keep going. <laughs> um, we were paired with um, women with disabilities in... Um, in Ankara and their um, activists. So we got to talk to them and listen to them and the, their, their life, you know, how, how um, it's not as accessible there as it is here. Like there's no, you know, ramps on the streets or access into buildings. So they're, they're kind of behind maybe where other countries are. And I got to listen to them and basically reflect on what they were telling me and and come up with a visual from that. So this piece is called Perseverance. And it's literally, you know, they can be quite um, stuck in place. So it's, you know, I've got the colors going from like a cool to a hot. And also this idea that this person who's wheelchair bound is tangled up in briars, but they are, you know, persevering and not letting it stop them. So they're growing roses through that. So they were amazing, they're really inspiring women, but that was a really cool project as well. This one uh, <laughs> was March last year. This is not the wall I was meant to paint, uh, but it's the wall I did. I was meant to go to uh, Łódź in Poland, which has some of my favorite street art pieces. I was like so excited to go there. And I was meant to paint a, an Irish themed, Irish Polish themed piece. And, and then literally as I flew from London, to Poland, they enforced, they announced their lockdown <laughs> and I had to immediately try and get a flight back, which didn't happen because everyone was in the country was doing the same thing. So I had to get a nine hour bus to Berlin and fly out of Berlin. But because I was there, I managed to just do this really quick four hour piece um, because it was coming up to St. Patrick's Day. So it's the clad a symbol, a symbol of friendship and love and loyalty. So yeah, that's taken me up to a year ago. Uh, this piece for Balna Fringe Festival, again, based on local mythology. Her name is Fleish, which if you see the spelling of it, it's quite a hard one to get your head around. Uh, just like this angle, because it's got the truck for reference to show how big it is. I'm really bad. I don't like standing in front of my walls and taking photos, but sometimes it's hard then to really gauge how, you know, enormous they actually are. Uh, this piece, since lockdown happened, was painted in Sligo and again just that idea of pushing colours that I like to do. Uh, yes, yeah, so these are just kind of more recent pieces that I didn't manage to actually get done outside of lockdown. <laughs> Love this one. This is a tribute this, uh, to these two dogs, um, which was just fun that someone hired me to in their house. 
Um, one of my favourite walls of last year is this one I did for the Sikh Festival in Dundalk. And it's St. Bridget, well it's Bridget of Fawhurst is how I've titled her. And it's the Christian and Celtic version of Bridget. Um, Cause she's been around a long time. And that was really amazing piece to do. It's a really good wall actually. It's a fantastic wall in Dundalk. Like you, you get a good approach up to it as well, which is great. And the team were fantastic. They gave me a really detailed brief, but let me do whatever I want and pretty much um, I'm going to, I think I have the breakdown of it here later as well in this. Um, so just real quick, this is my process now. Because people walk by and they see these squiggles and they don't know what's going on or how that works. So I use a squiggle grid to transfer my images onto a wall. So basically, like you see here, go mad on the wall. But to have every shape is different though so they're identifiable if you're looking at them you'll be able to find them on the wall easily i then have an app on my phone you can see there it's photo overlays i already have my um outline saved on my phone and i just overlay that onto a photo of the squiggles and you can move it around and adjust it and adjust the transparency and that's how i use that as a guide so it's a grid but it's an organic grid which is much quicker to throw up than measuring out squares and using a spirit level especially on that scale um and it can be done then then and there and that was the end piece that was for pure rose coffee i did that at the end of last summer so just to kind of give you an idea of how i do that so that's in bridget's piece this was the original sketch for it that i did on procreate I pretty much do all my sketches on procreate now and because of lockdown and uh, i basically I've been painting walls for years and people really like the walls, but then I don't have time to paint canvases and I don't have time really to have physical work. So this was the, you know, 2020 was the year where it's like, right, you have a bit of time in your hands. Um, this wall got really, really good reception and people were asking about artwork for it. So I decided to do a digital print of it. So that was it tidied up a little bit more. Um, I kind of needed to do this process for, for transferring it onto the wall anyways. And that was the finished piece. So I have this now as a print and I've had other pieces sitting on my um, computer for ages that I finally finished and with the prodding of my husband basically going, you know, you should be, you should have stuff for people to buy because obviously that makes sense. Um, so finally 2020 was the year that I actually started my shop. One of the things I really wanted to do was to get one of these throw blankets um, with my artwork on it as well. And it was a bit of a gamble, but people seem to have liked them. So I've expanded, I've, I've done a few of those now, which is pretty cool. Like this one, which is my children of Blair one. I love Irish mythology, I love storytelling, whether it's just like local folk folklore or a bit more epic. Um, it's the brown bowl of Cooley. So I was taking elements from my imagery and then turned them into enamel pins. Just to give you an idea, these are a few things that are on my shop. Um, I also have t-shirts and tote bags. And that's me, pretty much. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Uh, so that kind of brings me up to, that's what I'm doing now. These days at Scape there. And how do I stop sharing, stop sharing. You're all good. Thanks very much, Fraser. that was awesome. <clears throat> Sorry, did that go on forever? Uh, no, 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 don't be silly. It's kind of like, it's better than, me going on forever so like well done and thanks for joining us and and for uh and for sharing all your awesome uh work does anybody have any questions um for that they would like to ask frizz um i have one but i'm gonna give everybody the opportunity to to kind of bounce in first if they would like to ask no okay Frizz, what kind of advice i i know of a few um people who are kind of working as as, as artists and and are kind of starting off and are struggling and are kind of thinking about jacking it in to kind of get a desk job what what advice would you give to those people um because i know it's kind of a you know, I, I would imagine it's kind of like, you know, the music scene where you can kind of be really passionate about it, but sometimes the tips don't fall in your in your um, favor. So what kind of advice would you give for anybody that's kind of thinking about starting out, but is kind of nervous about it, you know, about not being able to make a career for themselves out of it? 
Um, well, the first thing is I just, I don't think that, uh, I'll, I'll kind of look at it from both um, aspects because I have a friend who, she's my cautionary tale from years ago. She, she went to uni and, and she left it. Um, she didn't finish the course. So she was an unbelievable oil painter. And her house is full of, uh, of beautiful artwork. But she was taking commissions and then had a bad experience that like really made her like, um, it really made her felt like, feel like work at the end of the day. And she decided she didn't, you know, she wants to keep her artwork for her and her passion for her. And she didn't necessarily want to have it as something that made money for her. And she's kept it separate and that has worked for her. And I think there's a fine balance between when you're doing something that you're passionate about as a job that it doesn't start feeling like you don't wake up in the morning and go, oh, I have to yeah. do that. And you have to keep that passion and fire. So one of the things I'd say is like, maybe not for everybody, you know, it's not necessarily, maybe it's something that you do just purely for yourself. Um, the other side of that, for us people who have decided to just go for it, is, um, yeah, have, you know, what I'm, I suppose what I'm trying to do now, which is, the shop basically was a good earner for me to supplement my income because I didn't have walls. So it's that idea of think outside, not even think outside the box, not thinking outside the box, have a shop of your stuff, um, but have many feathers of your cap. So do workshops. You know, those, you know, when I started out, I was mainly doing like community workshops and um, projects with young people. So there's workshops and then you could do, you know, then I, I do illustration work as well or t-shirt design. And I, you know, it's a little bit of everything that then adds to an actual income at the end of the day. Instead of just trying to be like, I want to sell my paintings that maybe there might be other things that you could do that can, you know, supplement your income so you can spread it out a little bit more. So you're not gambling all on the one thing being successful. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd say that, I suppose. Very good, very good. Does anybody else have any questions before we go on to my very, very innovative name drawing, I should say, which is basically a bunch of names written on paper in an old Nike shoe box, right? Um, no more, no more questions? Um, sorry, we've oh, go just ahead. got one question. Sorry, my daughter Nora here has a question. Were you drawing at when you were a child? Uh, yes, I've never not drawn. <laughs> I think I, I was born with a crayon in my hand. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was really lucky that my, uh, we were really encouraged to be creative in our house and um, presents were usually, you know, like half of them were usually creative, whether it was candle making or something like that. If we wanted to learn something like guitar, you know, it was encouraged. We were uh, brought to classes um, and then whatever stuck, stuck. So yes, I always, always, always drew. And, you know, even in school, not that I'm suggesting you do this, but all my, you know, copy, all my copy books and things like that just had all the, there's just doodles everywhere basically. So yes, I, I always loved it. And actually it was my mum had seen uh, the animation course I don't know, it must be on RT at some point, um, advertised, or there was a little segment on the news about the animation course in Dublin, and she actually suggested it to me, and I was really, I was like, what, you can, you can draw cartoons for a living? There's a course to do that? I didn't even, it wasn't on my radar, and just even the fact that they would let me, I know that sounds weird, but I know other, you know, I thought I had to be an architect, or, you know, I can draw, how can I draw and make money? Oh, I was thinking architecture. Um, but she actually brought me to Dublin to the open day. So yeah, mm -hmm. always drew and it was always encouraged, thankfully. Brilliant. Thank you. You're welcome. Good stuff. Anybody else before we move on? I know you're all dying to hear the names. Okay, let's do it. Uh, Rin, this is it. So I'm gonna go in, this is not fixed. But the winner is Alan Ritchie. Alan, if you're on, well done. We're gonna. That's us. Uh, thank you. Nice Did one. It. So we will. If you would like to send me Bye. your address privately, um, we'll get mm -hmm. that. We're actually gonna send you the 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 Bridget one. Is that right? 
we are. Yeah, we're going to get there that one. Anyway, the one that the fridge showed there. So if you want to send me your address privately, um, we will we'll get that kind of boxed up and, and sent off to you. You have to buy your own frame though. Sorry. Um, so listen, guys, thanks very much for coming along. That's kind of everything. Um, we're delighted to kind of get this back up and running again after, you know, we're just kind of continuing to, to roll it on, and even though it is on Zoom. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I keep saying this every time we do this, we won't have to wait too much longer until we can do it again in person, but, like, the end is in sight. So, uh, have a great weekend, everybody. Stay safe. Thank you very much, Frizz, again, for coming along and, and sharing all your awesome work. It's, uh, it's, it's unbelievable. If anybody wants to go over and check out Frizz's work, it's this is Frizz dot com yeah all right um, and well. um, no problem and there's links to your shops and our instagram is all this is this is phrase um as well so so go over and check it out because there's some awesome pieces of work there so look that's it everyone you just can all go back to work now <laughs> sorry um see you later have a good weekend and uh and keep an eye out for the next one thanks guys bye bye bye, bye thanks bye, bye.